Change lead time is probably the most popular, or at least the most insightful, of the door metrics. It measures the time it takes your team to ship a change, measured from the date of the first commit to the date the change is deployed, usually to production. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how Sleuth measures the change lead time for code changes and how it breaks that time down into multiple buckets to give you deeper insight into what's slowing your team down. Well, first off, Sleuth is tracking deployment. So it's looking at the moment a change hits production, and then it's breaking that change down to see what composed that change. If I look at a particular deployment, you'll see that that deployment is broken down usually into pull requests. If your team uses pull requests, in my case, we deploy each pull request to production, but some teams might batch these pull requests up and then deploy them in batch to the target environment, or other teams might not use pull requests at all. If Sleuth can find a pull request in a deploy, it will measure the change lead time for that pull request, or if not, it'll just look at the commits altogether as one big set. But let's take a look at the pull request case. First, Sleuth will take a look at this change and figure out what commits were involved in this in order to create a timeline of the first commit all the way to production. And that's what you're seeing down here. You're seeing this is your change lead time broken down into different buckets based on how long it took. Sleuth then takes the change lead time for each pull request, averages them together, and that creates the pull request for the deployment. These buckets are the coding time, the time between the first commit to when the review started, the review lag time, which is the time between when the review started to the first review was completed, the review time, which is the time from first review completed to when the pull request or change was merged, and then finally deploying, the time from when it was merged till when it hit the target environment, usually production. Looking into each one of these, you can see where your time is being spent in your change lead time. In my particular case, it looks like a lot of our time is actually happening in coding. And so I can dive in and see what this change was. Now, how does Sleuth measure these changes? Well, let's go through each category one by one. As I mentioned before, Sleuth is measuring the date between the first commit in a change to when a pull request was created. Now a pull request could be created in draft mode and that will not be counted. It's the moment the pull request is public. Whichever is the earlier of those two dates, that's the beginning of coding. The review lag period is the time between the beginning of a pull request being pulled out of draft mode or created to when the first review comes in. Now the first review could be an approval, it could be a comment, however the source control system defines a review as being completed, that's the moment that Sleuth uses to determine that bucket. Review time is the time between the first review being completed and the moment that the pull request is merged. If you just use commits and don't use any pull requests, then this bucket will always be zero. The pull request was merged to when the pull request or that change makes it all the way to the target environment in production. Now, if you're looking at it in production, you might see in the timeline of Sleuth various deployments to other environments, staging, QA, whatever makes sense for your team. But it's the moment when it hits the actual target environment. In this case, I'm looking at production. So therefore, it's the moment it hits production is what is being measured. That's how Sleuth calculates your change lead time. If you'd like to know how Sleuth tracks the other Dora metrics, see the videos over here.